Hey, I'm Brian Russell. Welcome back to class. I wanted to answer a question that I get pretty much every semester, and that's on the best resources to purchase for a long time and a long term ministry. And I want to make some recommendations around that. But first, let me talk about a key mindset that I would invite everyone to embody if you plan on being an interpreter of Scripture for others. And I think this applies to you as an individual, and there may be uh, both pastors and lay folks watching this video, but I'm speaking specifically now directly to persons who are preparing Bible studies, who are preparing sermons, leading small groups. In other words, persons that have to do study in order to teach, preach, write about the scriptures in a substance, uh, substantive way. And so it becomes critical to find the best resources, because here's the first principle. I believe out of love for God and love for others that we ought to commit ourselves to learning to use the best available resources over against defaulting to the easily available. And the easiest available stuff are things on the internet, and there's lots of sites that come, and even Bible pa software packages that claim to give you hundreds of rough of resources. In my op opinion, um, though there's nothing in really wrong with many of the resources, they're mostly weak because they're repackaged stuff from sometimes hundreds of years ago. Now, can you get some spiritual insights from such materials? Of course, right? Uh, like Matthew Henry was a great pastor in the 17th century. And again, thousands, if not millions of Christians have benefited from his reflections. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a pastor, you can do exactly the same thing that Matthew Henry did already. So why rely on just another pastor's notes uh, to enhance your own stuff when you can learn to do rich digging yourself and then use the best resources to gain insights that a purely uh, spiritual reading doesn't have access to. Because here's the reality. If you think it's spiritual just to stare at the text as though it's going to speak to you, all what's really going to happen is you're going to turn into a mirror. And, and what's a mirror do? A mirror simply reflects you. It's really difficult to not read continuously our own biases into the text. Therefore, we need to listen to the best resources from outside of ourselves and even outside of our traditions to simply make sure that we're actually hearing the voice of the Spirit when we study and not just necessarily our own woundedness, our own biases, or even our own political ideological commitments. I've seen enough of that, by the way. So use the best available resources. Now, the second thing, and this will disappoint many who are listening to the video, I don't have recommendations on a series of, of commentaries to buy. My guiding principle from building my own library has always been this. I buy the best available, the highest recommended commentaries on the book that I'm actually studying rather than blanket investing in an entire series. Now, there are exceptions. So like if you're independently wealthy and you have thousands of dollars of disposable income, yeah, buy a whole series. Or if somebody wants to give you a gift of a whole series, or you have a chance to pick up a used set relatively cheap, then of course just take them all. But here's the reality about series. A series isn't uniform. There's going to be really strong volumes by certain authors who did a great job, and then there's going to be people, again, I wouldn't say that people mail it in, but there's an uneven quality across series. You're going to get some really good volumes, and you're going to get ones that are a waste of your money. And also, secondly, a, a, an argument against series is unless you're literally going to preach every verse in the entire Bible, there's likely going to be books of the Bible that you'll never preach or teach out of at a high level. So, you know, why do you need the whole series if 
you're rarely, if ever, going to preach directly out of certain books. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't study and read through the whole Bible, but there's always that canon within a canon. So buy commentaries on the books that you're actually going to preach and teach out of. Now, can you fill in the gaps with some things? Now, let me recommend, before I get into commentaries themselves, a couple of essential resources. I highly recommend this book by David Bauer, Essential Bible Study Tools for Ministry. He's, Dr. Bauer was one of my mentors, and he's consistently published a tool like this. It used to be called Biblical Resources for Ministry. Now it's Essential Bible Study Tools for Ministry. Now you're thinking, like, why would I want to buy a book about what books to buy? Well, let me tell you this. I built my entire library carrying a copy of Bauer's book around with me. And whenever I would go to a new town, I'd go to all the used bookstores. I'd go to the theology religion section. And any book that was there for basically next to nothing that was in Bauer's book, I purchased it. He gives recommendations on the best commentaries on every book, the best Bible dictionaries, the best theological word books, the best history books. So if you have any question on what to buy, and you know, you're not in a class, so you're not just getting what the professor says, I would trust David Bauer's judgment. He's never led me astray at all, and I, I highly recommend getting a copy of his book and buying the volumes based on what he said. <clears throat> now, a second thing, um, when we talk about what to just have on hand, <clears throat> I recommend having a good study Bible. Again, a study Bible gives you basic notes to get you in the conversation. You know, my personal favorite is the Wesley Study Bible, but there's some other excellent ones as, as well. And then have a good one volume commentary. And I'm going to give you two recommendations, and I think you should probably get both of these. Um, for a good one-volume commentary, um, and this is in my tradition, the Wesley one-volume commentary, and truth be told, I have uh, I wrote the commentaries on Deuteronomy and Philippians in this. I don't get royalties on the book, but I've just found that this to be an outstanding and fairly recent. This was, was just published a couple of years ago. It's 2023. I think this came out in 2021 or 2020. I don't quite remember, but it, it's fairly recent, and this is an outstanding uh, one volume, so you can go to any passage on the Bible and at least get a little bit of information on it. Now, even higher on a recommendation list than that volume is I would recommend both the Old Testament and the New Testament version. This is just the Old Testament volume. The IVP, the InterVarsity Press Bible Background Commentary. This one is published by Craig Keener, who happens to be a colleague of mine. But this goes verse by verse to the New Testament, and you can get insights into each verse on its historical background. So this is almost a priceless resource. You'll use this. I use this almost every single week. It's really good. And there's an Old Testament version of this as well. So I would recommend having these on hands just to give you coverage of all the scriptures. And again, then use... Bauer, or you can again find reviews online of the best available commentaries to use. Now, let's talk about commentaries because commentaries come in different categories. And if we start at the bottom, I'll just say like popular ones. These are commentaries that are written for essentially any person, so specifically lay people. And so they're not going to go in depth into actual exegetical issues most of the time. They no reference to original language resources. There's not footnotes in there. It's basically exposition, um, usually by competent persons, but there's no high level stuff. So you're getting that if there's any rich insights into the text that come from scholarship, you're getting them secondhand, right? And so if you're in a in seminary, and those are in my classes, we don't use popular resources at all because anybody can use popular resources. And you're at seminary not to just have somebody give you fish. You're in seminary to learn how to fish. And if you learn to use tools properly, you can study any part of the scriptures on your on your own and do a good job. Now, let me start at the top. And uh, again, the, the rest of these types of categories, and these are my categories. Other people call these things slightly different things. Let's first talk about what happens um, at the 
preaching, teaching level, and I'm including kind of lower level commentaries here. And like Tyndale, it's an example of a Tyndale commentary. These are getting a little dated, but they're being revised right now. And this is like a set that you can often get for close to $100 or even less sometimes for the entire Bible. So yeah, that's probably worth the money at that point. Here's another a, a, a little thinner volume, the New International Biblical Commentary. And I'll also add to that the Interpretation Commentary series. This is what these look like. These are essentially commentaries. They're a little thinner. I mean, this is on the whole book of Psalms. There's depth there, so we're not denigrating these things at all. These are a little thinner, and they have to decide what to include and what not to include because they usually have word counts that are involved here. And these give intentional focus on the teaching and the preaching of the text for today. So those can be really helpful for pastors and teachers. But I would suggest that it's even better to go a little bit deeper and to go and look at, uh, at what I would call critical commentaries and then on occasion to go to the very highest level. So let me start, start at the top. When I talk about the highest level commentaries, I'm talking about a couple series in general. There's, more, there's, there's a couple other ones we could have mentioned too, but the most common available, at least in the United States, would be the Hermeneia series. This is getting a little bit older. And notice this is Joel and Amos, two very short books, pretty thick. And the Anchor Bible Commentary series. Look, this is just on Amos. So it's literally like almost a thousand pages on just eight chapters. And so what goes into the highest level type of a commentary? Well, when you write this as a scholar, and again, when you read what's going on here, you're getting a true deep dive. The scholars who write these highest level commentaries, they're masters of their trade, and they commit to doing an in-depth study of the text. And what that means is they're working directly out of the original language, and they're committing to being fully conversant with all of the secondary materials written on these volumes. Like just for example, I don't have it in my hand here, but in Hermene on First Peter, one of my old professors, Paul Octomeyer, he passed away a couple of years ago. He was working on the First Peter Hermene commentary. And here's what he did. It took him 10 years to write this, right? And he looked at every single Greek word in First Peter and searched it on how it was used in other ancient contexts. So imagine doing a word study that isn't just the words in the Bible, but studies every place where those same New Testament words showed up in the Greco-Roman world and looking at that for meaning. So when you read these commentaries, and they can be dry sometimes, and sometimes it's, it's not always easy to find the time to, to read the depth, these folks are dealing with essentially every issue that comes up in the biblical text, and you get a full review of all of the scholarly options uh, for particular readings of the text. And then they obviously will have their own opinion, but it's a full course meal. It's a buffet, if you will. So these, when we say highest level, we're talking about Hermeneia, um, Anchor, International Critical Commentaries, and there's a couple that come out of uh, Europe as well, uh, out, of, uh, out of Germany as well that would fit that. So that's the highest level. And then the last category would be critical commentaries. And this would be, it will be the sweet spot and maybe the upper limits for uh, most uh, folks that, especially those who've had a chance to use, have a seminary education. And at the critical level, again, these scholars are conversant with the breadth of the scholarship. And some will directly work off of the original language. Some do a little bit less, but they're all conversant in the Greek and the Hebrew and the array of literature. Now, from kind of conservative positions, I'll just, I'm going to lift up a couple of examples here. Um, the word biblical commentary, and this does work directly out of the original language, and so you get the scholar's own translation of the text. This happens to be on John. And then the New International Commentaries on the Old Testament and the New Testament. This is an example of one of the ones on the Old Testament. 
Again, it's a deep dive, but it works off the English text. Of course, the scholars are working out of the Hebrew, uh, but you can use this profitably without necessarily understanding uh, the language. Another example of a critical commentary, which is pretty good, that is not just primarily um, evangelical or more Bible-believing, would be the Old Testament library. This happens to be the Exodus volume by Brevard Childs. But again, this is a critical commentary that's aware of historical criticism that gets into the weeds on the text and it can take you really deep. So kind of just to wrap up, that's this is a little bit of a longer video than I wanted to do, but when you're purchasing commentaries, buy the best commentaries available on the book that you're going to be studying. And you will do well to build a library piece by piece. Because remember this also, it's better to have a library that you actually use than just a library that looks good, which means you have all these volumes that you've never opened at all. And I'm also, it lets you be a good steward of money to just buy the books that you're actually needing at the time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. It's my absolute privilege to share this information with you. And I look forward to hopefully uh, seeing some of you in class and maybe meeting some of you others, uh, other folks, whether through a page of one of my own books or maybe I get to meet you in person at some point. But thank you for watching.